biological basis of behavior. We all use mobile phone. We adjust the volume, brightness, etc. Right? When we do that, we are concerned with the correct volume or brightness that we need it. We don't think about the processes going inside the mobile phone. Likewise, the inner workings of the human body, they are different or distinct from the external expression. So, it is the job of the psychologist to find the connection between this, the external expression or the behavior and the internal or the inner workings of the human body. The biological process of the brain can explain the human behavior. So, if you study the process of the brain, it will be easy to explain the human behavior. Before going to the details, please remember to subscribe the channel. Thank you. Neuron structure. The nervous system is made up of specialized cells. This includes the nerve cells or the neurons and the glial cells or the glia. Neurons are the central building blocks of the nervous system and glia are the supporting cells. That is the neurons are the main or the central blocks and the glia is essential but they mostly work by supporting the neurons or the nerve cells. Neuron consists of several different parts and each of the parts have specialized function. Let's have a look at the structure of neuron. It has an outer semipermeable membrane, then a cell body or soma, nucleus, dendrites, axon, terminal buttons and myelin sheath. So, this is a neuron. This is a picture of the neuron or the nerve cells. It has an outer semi-permeable membrane. That is a cell membrane. It is called semi-permeable because it allows only smaller molecules and molecules with, uh, without electrical charge are allowed to pass through it. That is to, through the semi-permeable membrane. Only smaller molecules and molecules without an electrical charge are passed through it. It stops or it doesn't allow the large particles or the charged molecules to pass through it. Then it has a nucleus. This purple color one is a nucleus and it is in the cell body. This is the cell body and the nucleus is seen inside the cell body of the soma. Then it has dendrites. These are dendrites. These are the branching like structure or the extensions and the dendrites serve as input sites. So, here the processing of the impulse takes place and these dendrites what they do? They receive the impulse from other neurons and it is passed through the passed to the cell body. Then the signals are transmitted electrically across the soma and down towards the major extension and this ex extension is called the axon. These are smaller branches known as dendrite and these are the main extension known as the axon. In some axon, the glial cells form a fatty substance known as myelin sheath. This blue color one is the myelin sheath. So, the glial cells form the fatty substance on this axon. And what it does? It acts as an insulator and it helps increase the speed in which the signal travels. And at the end of the axon, the, it is terminal buttons are there. And in these terminal buttons, vesicles are there. And inside the vesicle, neurotransmitters are present. So, this is the structure of the neuron. Now, we can see the functions of neurons. 
we have seen the structure of neuron and how it functions that we can see. The basic function of the neuron is to process and transmit nerve impulse. The neurons have three basic functions. That is receiving signal, integrating signal and communicating this signal. So, the neurons, it receives the information, then it integrates it and then it is communicated to the another neuron. The nerve cells are the very basis of this communication. Human brain consists of about 150 billion nerve cells. That is 150 billion neurons are present in human brain. These neurons or the nerve cells are the information carrier of the nervous system. Each part of the neuron, it performs specific roles to keep the communicative action of the nervous system active. So, the main function is to communicate and this each part of the neuron performs specific role to make this communication active. So, let's see what all the parts do. These are dendrites, that the small branches that is from the cell body. These dendrites, what they do? They receive the incoming impulse or the electrical signal from other neuron. And it carries the signal towards the processing area or the cell body of the neuron. Then, this cell body, what they do? It integrates the signal. So, the dendrite, it receives the signal and the cell body, it integrates the signal and then by interpreting the signal, the cell body generates action potential. That is, there will be a change in the membrane potential and these processed or the integrated signal, it is propagated along the axon. This is the axon. And the integrated signal is moved through the axon and it reaches the axon terminal. And here the neurotransmission, it takes place. The neurotransmission is the process by which the signal sent from one neuron to the another neuron. So, here the neurotransmission takes place. So, the functions are. The dendrite, what they do, they receive the signal in the cell body. It is The signal is integrated and this is communicated. This integrated signal is communicated through the axon and it reaches the axon terminal and from here it is passed on to the next neuron. Here the neurotransmission takes place. This word can be pronounced as either synapses or synapses. Here I will be using synapses. So what are synapses? The neurons essentially communicate with each other through the synapses. And it is a combination of presynaptic ending, synaptic cleft and postsynaptic ending. So what are these presynaptic endings? These are the ends of neuron or the terminal button which contains the neurotransmitter. The synaptic clefts are the gap between two neurons. The information is passing from or the impulse is passing from one neuron to another. So, there is a gap between the two neurons and it is known as the synaptic cleft. Then post synaptic ending. It contains receptors. So, the impulse or the signal is sent from the presynaptic and there is a gap and then it is then received through the post synaptic ending. This post synaptic ending can communicate back to the presynaptic neuron. So, the communication is bidirectional. Now, we will see the diagram so that you will get a clear idea. So, this is one neuron and this is another neuron. The impulse is moved or the signal is moved from this neuron to this neuron. These are the terminal buttons of one neuron and these are the dendrites of another neuron. 
and here the transmission takes place and it is known as synapsis and this is the zoomed version of the diagram. So, as I said, there is a pre-synaptic ending that is the terminal portion of the neuron which sends the impulse and this is the receiving neuron. This is the sending neuron and this is the receiving neuron. This is known as the presynaptic ending and this is the postsynaptic ending. From this the impulse is sent and here there is reception. Receptors are there. These are the receptors. And the presynaptic ending contains what? Vesicles. Vesicles are small sac like structure and it contains the neurotransmitter. These neurotransmitters are then released to this area. So, you can see a gap between this. The neurons doesn't touch each other. They are separated by a narrow gap. And this narrow gap is called the synaptic cleft. So, the neurotransmitters, they are released to the synaptic cleft. And then from here it is received by the another neuron. The repeated synaptic activities have long lasting effect. That is, for example, if you are learning something, the more you study and repeat it, the more synapses are created in your brain. And it enables you to retrieve that information when needed. So, learn thoroughly about these neurons, its structure, the synapses and uh, next is the neurotransmitter we are studying. So, learn properly or repeat your learning and what happens? Your brain will be able to retrieve the information because more synapses are created. Neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters are chemical substance. It is released into the synapses and it is received by the receptor of the another neuron which receives the impulse. So, with the help of diagram, we can have a better idea of this. So, this is the sending neuron and this is the receiving neuron. The sending neuron in the end of the axon, there are terminal buttons and it will get connected to the dendrites of the receiving neuron. So, this is the enlarged diagram. So, in the synaptic gap, this neurotransmitters are released. When it is released? When there is an arrival of a nerve impulse. So, the nerve carries the impulse, right? So, from one neuron to another, the impulse is carried out. So, when the impulse come into this synapsis, this neurotransmitter or the chemical substance is released. Then, the receptors at the dendrite of the adjacent neuron or the receiving neuron, the neurotransmitter get bind into that receptor. The receptors are proteins where the neurotransmitters attach and it has different shape matching to the different neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter and the receptor have a low can key relationship that is specific neurotransmitter fit into specific receptor that is any neurotransmitter cannot be fit into any of the receptor. It has a lock and key mechanism and specific neurotransmitter will fit into a specific receptor according to its shape. The neurotransmitter binds to any receptor that it can be fit into. And there are more than 40 neurotransmitters in the human nervous system. These neurotransmitters, for example, uh, dopamine, serotonin and norepinephrine are 
in charge of certain aspect and behavior of human. For example, when a neurotransmitter releases dopamine into our system, then there is a change in our emotion. So, there are several different types of neurotransmitters are there and it have different characteristics. So, if consider if a neurotransmitter release dopamine, then there will be change in our emotions. It also influence our attention. Then, psychological disorders like depression, schizophrenia, etc. are associated with imbalance in one or more of the neurotransmitter system. So, these are chemical substances. Neurotransmitters are chemical substance and if there is any imbalance in this chemical substance, then various psychological disorders, for example, like depression, schizophrenia, etc. can occur. Let's have a quick recap on what we have learned. The glia and the neurons are the two cell types that make up the nervous system. The neuronal communication is made possible by the neurons specialized structures and the glia cells play supporting role. Regarding the structure of the neuron, the soma contains the cell nucleus and the dendrites are extended from the cell body or the soma. It receives the impulse, then axon. It is the major extension of the cell body. It is often covered by myelin sheath. And at end of the axon, there are terminal buttons and it contains synaptic vesicle and it is filled with neurotransmitter. The vesicles are sac-like structure and it contains neurotransmitter or the chemicals. Then neurons essentially communicate with each other through the synaptic gap. That is the neurons doesn't touch with each other. There is a gap between the neurons and the transmission happens through this gap and this gap is called the synapses. So this is all about the biological basis of behavior. Hope you like this video. Please share. Thank you and keep smiling.